Welcome to episode 132 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're chatting to legendary South African hammer throw, Chris Haramsa. Good evening, Chris. How are you doing today, sir? I'm fine. And, and yourself? Yes, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's uh, great to chat to you. Um, and a gold medalist of note. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. But uh, uh, I think there's still a few uh, things I had to achieve, but, but that's all right. I had a good run and I'm happy. Just, um, we'll get into all of your gold medals and your amazing records and, I mean, even world records. Um, take us back a bit, though, to sort of Chris as a young boy at school. Um, I wouldn't imagine hammer throwing and, and shot put and discus was sort of something available to you at primary school. Were you playing rugby and doing other sort of forms of sport? Yeah, when I was growing up, uh, my father always had these amazing stories of sport people. And I think uh, 50% of it was never true. Uh, superhuman efforts sportsmen had and um, achievements they had and everything. So at an early age, uh, the seed was so sown to, to become a, a sports person. So. Um, I started out like the normal stuff. I, you will not believe it, but um, the first sport I really did was soccer. I used to play soccer yeah. on the six for the Vol Triangle, and we, and we won our league. I was a goalkeeper, actually, a format. You know, I, I, I think the whole season I only let two goals through. But uh, then uh, I started playing rugby, I started playing cricket, and I was introduced to athletics. And uh, as I progressed to the high school, um, I also I, I loved uh, cricket. I, I, my first game I played when I was in high school uh, as, a, as a 14 year old was for the first team of the technical high school Sasselberg and uh, um, I really loved cricket. Uh, I think if I had to grow up in these, this year or now where all this um, Indian cricket is taking place, the IPL and everything, I would have enjoyed that because I was a big hitter. I could make a quick 30, 40 runs and uh, I was a bowler. So I was a nice all rounder, um, but uh, gradually I, I grew into this athletics thing, this solitude thing where you, you have to do your own thing and practice and respond, practice in a way that you have to respect responsibility for your own, uh, own results. And uh, um, I, I, I progressed into, into uh, discus. I, um, I did the, the, the youth championships, the junior championships, and uh, I managed to get a silver and the juniors. I was always a very small guy. I wasn't a big guy. Um, I was very, very thin. Uh, I had to do a lot of, of, of weight work after school to, to, to get strong enough to, to progress in the sport. But uh, like I said, I, I did everything. I actually did other sports as well. I used to play uh, softball. Um, I used to play... Um, I like eating golf balls for a long range. I actually have SA colors for long driving. I uh, hit one ball once, 405 meters. So I represented South Africa and I taste the Turkish between Finland and uh, Sweden and America and South Africa. I wasn't very successful at that event, but nevertheless, I was selected to present. So I love sport. I think uh, if, when, when God created me, my tour, there was a lot of uh, sport um, uh, um, uh, put, put into me to, to, to achieve things in sport. So I, I, I always loved sport. Until today, I, I, I think... Uh, sport is, is an amazing tool and it's an amazing thing to, to live yourself out and to express yourself. I think it's, it's like art. That's the way I see sport. Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree with you. And whether it's team sport or individual sport, I think it's so important for a kid growing up to, to be active in some form of sport. Yes, yes. I think it builds a lot of character and discipline and and um, if you got somebody behind you that motivates you a little bit, I, I believe in that. You have to have a nice team around you. If you've got a good family, a good, good parents, and uh, they, they, they motivate you enough, it can open doors for you. Uh, I always say you must strive to be the best person that you can be. And I think uh, there's a lot of principles in sport that help you to become a good person. Uh, and uh, if you can stay humble and you can stay focused and you can work hard, um, I think sport can take you to a lot of places, even grow your character. And I think that's, that's the thing that people don't see on TV. But one day when it stops, you must be able to carry on implementing the, the rules and, and, and the lessons you learn from sport. 
And uh, Chris, just onto your golf, do you do you still play? Do you uh, sort of continue the game as just for a, from a fun perspective? Uh, I would like to to be more involved with it, but I'm uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm very involved with the businesses that I'm I'm part of. So um, and I'm I'm working hard now. I put a lot of time into that to to make it successful. But I love it. I, I I don't love it in the beginning if you have to 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 search for the ball and the rough and you have to. I'm I'm a very expressive guy. I once played with a with a pastor and I didn't know that and I let go of a few uh, swear words and after a while we talked to each other and he said. That guy asked me, what are you doing? I said, no, I, I, I'm an athlete. And I asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm a pastor. And I thought, oh, yo, that was a little bit of embarrassing because I can get a little bit angry at myself when I'm playing golf. Um, I'm one of those guys that really, really get angry if the ball doesn't go go straight. I I, 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 I like it to, to, to go straight and far, but uh, most of the time it goes far, but not straight. <laughs> I, I hear your pain, uh, Chris. My uh, philosophy with golf is it's an expensive sport to play, so I'm going to hit as many shots as I can. Yes, yes. I think if you can get one or two on the day, that's nice. And I think you can you can enjoy those two shots. Although there's maybe 70 or 80 or 90, and in my case, 110 shots. Uh, inside there, I will I will get something that I enjoyed. And, and, um, ever uh, dished up, um, I, I, I love, and I think in South Africa, our golfers are amazing. I think they are they're on the top of the range when it comes to quality. Uh, yeah, it's amazing uh, the results. And I think uh, the best sportsman ever in South Africa, Gary Player, what an amazing person. I love that guy. I think he's, he's one of the best ambassadors for South Africa. Oh, no, I mean, absolutely. And uh, Chris, you're not far behind, mate. Um, when did you start bulking up, Chris, and, and when did you uh, sort of first find hammer throw as a sport? Um, I, it, it happened in my uh, final year in school, in my matric year. Um, we had uh, English class and there was this Time magazine and there was an article uh, around the boycott. Uh, the, the Americans boycotted uh, this one Olympic Games. Uh, and... Um, uh, the, the next Olympic Games was obviously boycotted by the, the Soviet states and um, they were talking about possible medal winners that's going to miss out and there was an article about Yuri Sedik, uh, the world record holder and, uh, um, and I looked at his height, he was the same height as me but he was a lot heavier than me but um, that triggered everything, that, that put it into my mind but I actually only started with it when I was in my first year at the VUT and uh, um, uh, I realized as a discus thrower, I will not progress too far because I'm only 1.84 1 uh, meters tall and successful discus throwers are between 195 and 205 um, meters. You know, um, there's very, very tall people. Their levers are very, very long. So, and, uh, but I realized soon that that thing is very heavy. If you, if you don't, if you don't um, train a lot and try and get stronger, I would not say so much bulky, but you must be extremely strong. And I think that power rate, power to weight ratio is very important. So you must get strong, but not too heavy sometimes. But my best fighting weight was 118. But when I started, I weighed 84 kilograms. And it took about uh, four or five years of hard work. And the big thing about it, I did it clean. You know, I didn't use any, any banned substances to get there. So that was very frustrating. Every year going up two kilograms, four kilograms, three kilograms, you know, five kilograms. One, one year, I think I managed to go up to about seven kilograms, you know, but um, it was a long, long, arduous time doing it, you know, um, but uh, um, gradually I got there and I could capitalize and, uh, and, and uh, on, on the strength that I gained. And uh, I always put a lot of effort into my legs, you know, I, I used to squat a lot and I, and I used to make sure my core are strong and that helped me a lot. I mean, when you, when you throw big throws, you can you, you sometimes have to handle about uh, three thousand newton, and, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 that's, uh, let's say three hundred kilograms of force uh, if you um, if you throw it, and then your legs have to do the work. No other muscle can do it. So, uh, um, but um, there's a lot of aspects of getting stronger specific to this to event. I think you have to keep cover everything, but it's a long, long road. You're not going to do it overnight. I, I've never seen a prospect on a 20 all of a sudden just become Olympic champion. Uh, there's, 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 there's one guy, now one guy, uh, coming up from the Ukraine. Um, uh, and, uh, but I think he's still, he, he will not 
the animal to do it. It's, it's, a, it's a, I almost say it's a, it's a, it's a sport for the guys that's long in the tooth. You must, you must I mean, throw must, years before you get results. It must be quite a, because I mean, obviously, if you're a fast runner, you can just go on the track and you can run fast. But sort of hammer throw is, there's a skill to it as well, which obviously you, you, you mentioning now you need to learn. Because it's not just all about, okay, I'm going to pick this thing up and I'm going to throw it. There's a technique and there's a, there's a way and, you know, there's obviously the weight that you need to put on. So as you say, it is a sport where you actually need to build on as opposed to, you know, just come into and sort of excel. You see, when we were born, we, the, the, the natural... The natural tendency in a human when there's when there's danger, let's say five, six thousand or ten thousand years ago is to run. So you as humans we've been been running our whole existence. And uh, uh, you know our natural it is for your body to turn around and run forward. You're not built for that. Your nervous system doesn't understand what happens. When you start throwing, you get you want to vomit uh, you, because you get confused. You don't know you, you don't know what's going on. You you disorientated. You the, the first three months that I was throwing, I had constant headaches. I, I I was, I, I, like I said, I didn't vomit, but I, I had a, I, I, I was, I, I didn't feel, feel well most of the time. Um, and <clears throat> your nervous system, I think it's not, a, it's, it's not so sure your, 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 your muscles. Your nervous system have to do something it's never done in its life before. And especially when I train younger people, I can see they're not getting tired, but their nervous system is finished. So you can go on as long as you like. As you like. If, 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 it, if your nervous system is spent, you spent. You can't push people any further. And I think that's one of the big things when you want to become a big thrower. You need a high volume, volume of quality throws, and your training is based around it. It's not about uh, how strong you are, how fast you are. Obviously, that is very important, but you want, when you go into your, your big throwing uh, um, time, to have 16 quality throws rather than eight quality throws. People go and they throw 50 throws, but it's not quality, so you're, you're, you're creating something else. So you, your, your whole conditioning time is spent on, on getting your body in shape to do a lot of quality throws. And I'm telling you, to get 16, 20 quality throws in a, in a training session is very, very difficult. If you, if you want to get it right, it takes years of training. And people come to me and say, oh, I did 50 throws yesterday. Then I want to know, was it what was the quality of that throws? You understand? So, so um, the whole training is designed around it to get, to get your body in a position where you can repeat and repeat and repeat. And that's what any sport event is all about. You must get fit enough to repeat your, 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 um, uh, your discipline. You must do it all over and over and over again until you, you get to a level where you, where you master it. And you never master it. You, you just get into a situation where you, you feel you do better than other people, so you did something right. Uh, I always say, I still know what I did. I still, I can still learn about 80, 90% more of things that I did I ever done. You know, uh, the, the big thing is, uh, I think one thing that I, that I learned is that um, you never know everything. You, you, as, as I coaching people now, I'm actually better at preparing programs because I'm more worried that they, they, they don't do well. So I dig a little bit more and I research a little bit more and I put a little bit more effort in planning all the programs. I didn't do that. With myself. I actually very angry at myself for not coaching. No, oh, I'm sure. Uh, and Chris, I mean, just back to you. Um, you won your first South African title in, in 1997 um, at the age of 24. Um, did you kind of just burst onto the scene? Obviously, it had taken a long time to, to get to that level. Um, but essentially, it was your first uh, national title. It was your first competing in a national title. And it was your first win. That's funny. You must remember, uh, um, I don't want to say this because then I'm going to sound like a down dinosaur. But um, I actually started. Uh, training in a, in a, in a pre-1994 era. So at that stage, there wasn't any international competitions. So my, from high school off, I never thought I'm going to compete internationally. So my big dream at that stage was just to become a, a national champion. And I wanted to do that in, 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 in high school. So on the 17, like I said, I came, I, I've always in the medals, but I never got the gold. And it was a big dream for me. Most of my, my prayers at that stage was to just become a, a national champion. And that, 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 um, goal was so strong in me that when I was 20, I started throwing hammer to achieve that goal. 
understand? So I never t t touched a hammer before I was 20. And uh, um, uh, so it, it did, just didn't try something else because I did javelin, I did um, 1.88 meter high jump. You know, that's not very good, but in high school, I thought it wasn't too bad. But my last option actually was the hammer, you know, so, um, and then I had to work hard and I, I was so determined to reach that goal that um, it was amazing the day I reached it. And I think I prayed so much for it, I got 23 more, you know, so, so that all of those, there was a backlog of a lot of prayers and the end of the day, um, I was blessed amazingly and I, I thank God for that, for that blessing. And I mean, Chris, I want to come back to those 23 a bit later because that's just, I mean, it's unheard of. Um, that first title, it must have been a, a pretty emotional uh, title for you, though. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it, it was very, very, very emotional. Um, the whole family was there, so there's big expectation. But the morning of the competition, um, uh, I didn't thought I had a big chance because Ruman Koprovic and the guy from Bulgaria that became a South African citizen was, uh, was the favorite. And uh, when I arrived at the stadium, they said he, he pulled out. He actually retired. He was sitting in the pavilion that day, actually. It was literally the meeting before the SA Championships was the last meeting he competed in. And I thought it's this is a little bit easier, but it was a tough road uh, earning that first title. I think this is the roughest one of all of the all, all the titles I, I won afterwards. I, I had a no throw in my first throw. I had a no throw in my second throw. And in my third throw, I just managed to squeak through to the next three rounds. And that I was nervous. I've never been in my life so nervous. You know, it was it was it was, it was, it was um, uh, um, a very 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 bad place to be at that time. And then the fifth throw also was a was a bad throw. And I had to go full out on my last throw. But uh, there, there's a lot of things that happened in this competition uh, regarding my faith and, and how, I, how I handle um, pressure after that. Um, and I managed to push it through in that last throw and uh, everybody was happy. My father was so nervous, he couldn't find him for an hour afterwards. He walked out of the stadium and he, he was somewhere in a parking lot. Um, you no know, cell phones was at that stage, wasn't a big thing actually. So we took a time to get him. And uh, luckily my grandfather was there, everybody was there. So it was a, it's a very, very big thing for me, uh, um, that first one. No, no, I'm sure, absolutely. Um, Chris, speaking of no throws, um, firstly, what is the weight of, of the hammer and have you ever hit yourself with it? Um, the, the weight of the hammer is 7.26 kilograms, but like I said, when you, when you move up to, 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 to throw an 80 meter throw, it can weigh up to 300 kilograms. Uh, the only time you, you, you really hit that is when you start your throw, when you drop it. You can hit your ankle or, or stuff like that. The, the worst thing that sometimes happens is the wire breaks. Then you fly sometimes. I had two concussions when a wire was breaking. Uh, I had a bad throw and I competed in 1998 at the World Cup. Um, uh, I actually displaced my hip and uh, they had to, the physios had to work it back again. And uh, um, uh, I had to compete in the Commonwealth Games, I think, two weeks later. So um, uh, that was a bad fall. But... Um, I don't think the hammer hit you that much, and especially the way I start. I start with the hammer on top of my head. Nobody else starts like that. So the chance of hitting, hitting my leg or something is, is not, not big. I, actually, I never hit myself with the hammer when it came with the way I started, you know. So, um, but bad falls. I had a few, like I said, I, I had two concussions in my life where you, where the thing breaks, you don't know where you are. But you just take the fall wherever it is. You know, if you know where you're going to fall, then, uh, then it's all right. But if you don't know where you are, you fall, you, you can't protect yourself. So um, I actually once rolled up into the into the netting of the cage next to the one of the poles. That was one of the biggest, biggest, uh, I would say, the closest I got to Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. I mean, Chris, you, you said you got your, your hip injured a little bit in uh, 1998. But I mean, that year you went on to win the African champs. Um, and at the Commonwealth Games, you walked away with a bronze. So not too bad for a man who just uh, done his hip in. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, like again, like I said, one of the bad things about that year is I was still really coming into the international scene. Um, and I did. I, there's a lot of mistakes I made. I think uh, in Europe, they got such a, a long culture, people throwing years and years that they, when it comes to preparing for these type of competitions, uh, there's certain things you have to do. I was still a novice at that stage. I'm still angry. If I think about the Commonwealth Games because I was throwing 
the wrong hammer at the wrong time in my preparation and I did a lot of things wrong. I could have won that competition, you know. So um, it was good and I always look at everything that I do and it's not always good at, at, at what I did bad there, what I could have done better and in the later stage I, I, I got it right. But um, um, uh, that was really my first year getting introduced to a, a, a full uh, international season. It was a big learning curve, curve for me there and um, and, and I learned a lot of lessons there. But still, it was nice getting on the podium. It was nice, uh, especially the Commonwealth Games was amazing. Uh, the Malaysian people put up a hell of a show. It was one of the biggest experiences I've ever had. The, the whole village, the whole culture, the whole thing around it. I had to get used to it, you know. And I always say, send people to these type of things. Um, and they can get used to it. You go back to your home. You, you analyze what, what's going on there. How are you going to prepare for it? Because there's a lot of struggles as well. Are you are you are you trying while you're there and what you have to do? And um, um, and I think that's a big thing. I sometimes disagree with with selection criteria. That it's not only about uh, um, throwing as far as possible, but it's is is getting exposure and and on a, on, a, on a higher stage coming back. The big champions will find a way. Of, of producing uh, the goods at, on the day, but you need experience. You need to, to, to be at, um, um, you, you need to be in the mix of things to, to, to know what to expect and what to do next time. Um, I mean, Chris, from 1998, you, you really flew, especially on the African continent. Um, you won six gold medals or six titles at the, at the African champs. Uh, you won three golds at the All Africa champs. I mean, you essentially dominated the African continent for almost 10 years or more than 10 years uh, yes yes i'm happy about this um um uh, it was nice uh, in africa to uh, you see we were when I started throwing, there was no real South African guys throwing hammer at African champ. There were guys like Charlie Kuhn and they got some medals there, but but um, it was nice uh, um, performing in that stage. Uh, but but there was there was always things like the World Championships and the and the Olympic Games that was that was my big target. So I had to push hard and and progress as fast as possible to get to that stages. And a lot of times the African champs and the African Games was a nice place. As a, as a launching pad to get to that goals, you know. So, so, and I, I always took pride being the best in Africa. That's amazing. It's, it's, it's a, uh, to, to, to say that you're the, the best in Africa, I always took pride in it. Like the same way that I took pride in, uh, in being the national championship champ, champion of South Africa. I'm actually taking, took took more, more pride in that. I'm a proud South African, and, and it, it, it's nice to say that as a South African, I was the best for a long time with that. But in Africa, it's actually a bigger stage, and that was nice. And, and the, uh, and not only that, uh, I remember throwing in, in, in uh, um, Ethiopia and uh, these Ethiopian people, they used to middle distance and long distance. They're actually geniuses at that, that event. And, and, and them seeing this hammer thrower throwing, it was for them an amazing thing. I, I'm sure that I've seen it in some areas in the world, but they appreciate it. I will never uh, um, uh, forget. I actually threw a championship record at that event as well. Getting out of the stadium and people so interested in the hammer and talking to me and how they want to do it. So that was a, that was a lot of that was nice for me saying yeah this, these people are want to throw the hammer and, and they're interested. In it. it felt great. It was really really good uh, for a country that, that's got such a rich long distance and middle distance culture to, to, to see people interested in the hammer. That was a very nice thing for me. I, I enjoyed that a lot. You know, if you if you ask me about all over Africa where I competed, I, I could see it. So I, I exposed people to an event that they're not really familiar to. And I think somewhere there, you're going to get a few guys competing and a few guys uh, uh, taking a little bit further than I took it and, and, and put Africa on a world stage and, and get some nice gold medals at big competitions. That was The big thing for me African Championships. I wanted to give a big shout. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Chris, you, you talk about getting recognition and, and sort of interest from people and people coming to talk to you. Um, you obviously won the, the Commonwealth Games in 2010. 
did that make you kind of a sort of a folk hero in, in Sesselberg? And do we, we, I mean, you walk the streets of the town where people come up to you and talk to you and, and shake your hand. And we, did you come a, become a, a big hero in Sesselberg? Oh, I think um, I think one of the reasons I love Sasselberg, even if I didn't throw the hammer far, I would still have been been had a lot of great people around me and, and people looking up to me. And I looked up to a lot of people in in, in Sasselberg as well. There's a lot of sport people that came out of Sasselberg. But it was nice. The further I threw, uh, um, the, the, when I threw 80 meters the first time, that was a big thing. Um, um, they, they made a, a big thing about it. You, you know. It depends on how, how, how the, the press presents your efforts and it get, gets onto TV and then people start phoning you and they understand the magnitude of what you've done, you know. So it came a long time, you know, 2010, I never thought I, I will win it there because I went into a, the competition uh, with a three centimeter tear in, in one of my tendons in my left knee. And uh, um, I never thought I'm going to win it. It's just a lot of experience and stuff. And when I won that, it was more like a relief than a, than a joy, you know, because everybody expected me to win that because I hold the Commonwealth record. And my father always joked with me and he said, yeah, it's nice uh, being the Commonwealth record holder, but, but you've never, never been the Commonwealth champion. So that was actually a big thing for me to tell my father, listen, now you can stop with that nonsense. Yeah. I won this thing. Uh, as we can move on. But um, it was at the end of my career, um, uh, in 20, 2006, I was in very, very good shape and I actually lost the filling at the South African Championships and I got an infection. You know, if you ever had a tooth infection, you will know what I'm talking about. And I just left it alone. And when we were flying to, to Australia to compete in Melbourne, I was sick there. And uh, um, I got there and I started medication and stuff, but it didn't go away. It wasn't like uh, I took some medication and three days time it was lost. And it actually drained my body of a lot of energy. And uh, that was a big bad, it was a bad thing for me because I end up third there. And uh, that was, I thought was my last chance. Listen, I'm not going to get another chance. And I thank God for the fact that, that I another, got another chance in India. And I love India actually because I've never lost in India. There was a Afro-Asia Championship. I'm still actually the Afro-Asia Championship because I never held it after I think 2003. Uh, and, uh, and I actually beat the, the 2016 Olympic champion in that competition. So I've never lost in India. I'm proud of that. Uh, I, I competed twice there and I, 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 came, I, I, I came out of the, cha the, the, the winner there and, I, and I'm happy about that. But like I said, 2010 was a, was a, was a miracle off. Um, uh, we actually did a scan on the knee at the village and the doctor said, you, you can't throw like this. There's no way you can throw. And I said, just give me enough tape and I will we'll, we'll see what we can do. And I, and I managed to win the thing. And that, that made it very nice. I remember getting to the village later that evening because I was one of the last people back home. I think it was about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. I got to the village and it's so quiet, just sitting on a bench and, and reflecting, the, reflect on the whole thing was such a peaceful moment. I will never forget that. Um, but it's something I should have won. In 2002, while we're talking about the Commonwealth Games, I was throwing over 80 meters. The closest guy to me was, was at 72 meters. And the funny thing is they moved the program to a Sunday. So uh, I couldn't compete there. And uh, um, so I, there's all these bad things. I always say you've got a, a boogie competition and this was... One of my boogie competitions. Um, uh, I should have won it in two. That was nice. Uh, 2016, I was actually in better shape, but I wasn't selected to compete. And I say training, I threw a distance that put me in the medals. You know, uh, it was was very sad. But but the 2010 was was. Uh, I'm happy about it. Winning it, it is good. And I think the whole. The whole, the whole Sasselberg uh, um, uh, appreciate it. It's nice walking in the street and people coming up to me and said, yeah, it was nice beating that guy on the last throw. We were so nervous and we, they lived into it and they explained to me where their children was and how oh, this one guy broke a glass and how they, the guys were bu buying each other around in the bar and everything. All those those stories was nice hearing afterward. You know, it was, it was nice. I, 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 like I said, I, I was a blessed guy, blessed, blessed man. I mean, a lot of people sort of, they, they remember their life moments through moments that you've done and, and you've experienced, which is, which is very special. Um, Chris, you mentioned you're a very religious man um, and you've never unfortunately competed at the Olympics due to the hammer throw being on a Sunday. Um, that's quite a phenomenal stand to make and all 
all respect to you. Um, you're only the second athlete in the world to have ever sort of taken that stance. Can I ask why? Oh, you must, you must, you must, first, you must just understand, one. I'm, I'm not an angel. Eh? I'm, I'm can be a, I can be a, a naughty boy. So, um, it's never been making a, a proper uh, with the holiest of holy. You know, you understand what I'm trying to say. Be and for me, it's in the God, my religion to, to see if I can get a. Uh, become the best person that I can be. Um, my language sometimes is not sort of the best. Like I can be sometimes an angry man if, if, if I get frustrated. But the big thing for me from the start was that that I, I was a true believer. I still, uh, can I say, I think uh, that is a big part of my life. I accept Jesus Christ as my savior. And out of thanks, I don't compete on Sunday. We can go big stories about it, but that's the, the, that, that's the, 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 the big story around it. It's all, it's all about thankfulness, thanking the... The Lord for all the blessings that He gave me, especially for for me, to be able to live, in, live forever. But um, it, the first time it happened was in 2000, um, and I actually was in good shape. Uh, I think the Olympics was win that was won that year with, uh, with by Simon Zolkowski, a Polish guy. I actually beat him later on in Europe, uh, um, uh, and I was throwing in a competition uh, that Friday or Saturday in Pretoria, and Alex actually managed. To compete against him in a qualifying rounds, and I was ma I managed to in a qualifying rounds to claim fourth out of 35 people. Uh, if you look at my distance, I actually threw a South African record. I think I threw 78.7, so I was literally a meter and 30 centimeters away from the uh, the winning distance from the from the Olympics. And that was actually that was that's actually a little bit sad. But like I said, I always say if it wasn't for my five, I wouldn't have thrown 80 meters. All that principles I used to throw that far. So, so in good and bad times, you must stick to what you believe in, and, and that will take you through in life. And the bad thing about that was that um, from 2000 to 2005 was my peak time. That is the time that I, I, I beat the Olympic champions, I beat world champions. I was, I was really, really cooking. But I, um, uh, 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 I think in 2005 was, was the last chance I really had in Finland. And that was the worst competition ever in my life. I couldn't survive the qualifying rounds. And I would say that was the only real time that I still had a chance to be a, a contender at the World Champs of Olympics. I managed to, to, to qualify again in 2008. So I qualified for three Olympics. But I couldn't go to any of them. After that, they changed it again. So, um, but but, but I, I have no regrets. I still believe because of my faith, I threw a certain distance and I, I, I achieved certain certain things. I sometimes tell people, I, oh, I'm not supposed to be Chris Harms or the hammer thrower. I was supposed to be Chris Harms or the guy that, that didn't compete on Sundays. I think that was maybe the path uh, God wanted me to follow, you know. So he blessed me in such a way uh, and gave me a lot of things. And, 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 and that was his plan for me, maybe. Um, so um, I'm, I'm not, I don't regret it. Like I said, most of those guys, I kicked them off. Uh, if I see they won that Olympics, I beat you, I beat you, I've beaten you, I've beaten Primoz Cosmos. That was a very good thrower, and I managed to beat him as well. So, uh, so that was that was very nice. Uh, I managed. I think there's not a lot of guys that can say that they that beat some of those guys of that caliber. I just uh, it was just unfortunate that between those five years, I couldn't manage to get a meeting to really test myself against them. Yeah, for sure. uh, Chris, you say your your peak was sort of that five years. I think I'm going to disagree with you slightly. You won 23 South African titles in a row. So for 23 years, from 1997 till 2018, you were the South African champion every single year. Now that's a world record. No one in any sport has ever done that anywhere around the world. Um, so you're actually in the Guinness Book, world, Guinness Book of World Records. That, Chris, jeepers, creepers. You say you missed the Olympics, but I would almost say, okay, I'll miss the Olympics. You give me 23 South African titles. That is unbelievable. I'll trade it any day for an Olympic title. <laughs> any day. I will not even think twice about it. No, no. You see, if you, if you move in athletics, you don't have to... To, to, to start a debate who's the best, best athlete. Let's take weights for, for Nika. 
a world record Olympic gold medal. You start with that. Then you go to uh, um, Olympic champion. Then you go to a world champion. You go down like that, that, and then, then you go there. The, the nice thing about the 23 consecutive titles is the fact that, that I could stay healthy, stay focused, and, and, and that, that's an achievement, I think, if you, if you have to look in that, the durability, and the, 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 the durability thing in that. Um, <clears throat> and I, I always say that the reason I could have done that is, is, is that I, I never used banned substances. And, I, and like I said, I, I'm a man of faith, and I, I, thought, I, I, I still feel that I, I was blessed. And the funny thing is the way it, all of this ended was, was in 2018 when I, I never, never in my life had an operation for, for hammer throw. And hammer throwers can have a lot of operations. On my fourth throw at the, at the, at the um, uh, 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 South African Championships in, in Germiston, I ripped off a, a quad muscle in my, in my knee where it attached into the knee. So the nice thing for me is I could literally not compete anymore. I couldn't go any further. Uh, and and uh, um, and the nice thing for me about that is I managed to put all all the effort I still had uh, 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 um, till up till the um, up, uh, up until the end, you know. So um, uh, the funny thing is I, I I injured that knee and I had to be operated the next Wednesday, and then I was the doctor said I mustn't walk around, but I still walked around and I stepped into a hole and I ripped off the left one as well. So I was lying on my bed in my bed for 16 weeks to recover from from the double knee surgery. And uh, but the nice thing about it is nothing inside my knee got damaged. My my car tissue is still well. My my cross ligaments, my medial ligaments, everything is good. It was just a muscle that that went over the knees. I actually had knee problems the last few four weeks, not knee, four four years of my of, of competing, and that was the big thing for me. And I think that was the big big thing for me going up uh, 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 to even more titles if I. Uh, I had to, to stay injury free, free, uh, free. but the, the doctors told me from the start, because of all the heavy lifting and stuff, my, my tendons started calcifying. So that it wasn't that elastic anymore. And I had to push in that event and uh, I pushed it too far. And I actually knew before I went in the circle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, 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 grave in the red now. <laughs> and I was just hoping it, nothing goes wrong. But when I, when I step off to the liver, I could feel how I ripped it off in my, in my leg and I couldn't compete anymore. But, but uh, um, the, I could tell you a very interesting story. I think the 12th one was very close because um, uh, people in Australia, Mori Plants was the guy's name. He was one of the organizers in Australia. Uh, uh, we had to compete, I think it was in 2000 and 2003 or four. Uh, I had to compete at the SA Championships in Stellenbosch uh, on the Friday, I think, or the, sat the Saturday. And there was a Grand Prix meeting in Melbourne, Australia. And Maury Plants phoned me and he said, uh, Chris, we want you to compete here. And I said, no ways I can do that uh, in, in, in five days, six days time. I have, they phoned me a Sunday. I have to compete in the national championships. And he said, okay, now I understand. And uh, he, he made me a, a financial offer. He said, uh, I'm willing to pay you this. And I said, no, 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 it's not going to work. And about an hour later, he phoned me back and he tripled the, 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 <laughs> the incentive. And I said, oh, this is, this is now, this is, this is a good uh, incentive. I must see if I can make a plan. So I phoned Chris Bootes and I said, um, from Chris, can we make a plan? I want to throw there on Wednesday, but I still want to be back for the SA Championships. Can you help me? Uh, I think I jumped on the plane on the first and I flew through the night and uh, actually arrived, arrived, arrived in, the, in the evening. I actually remember two o'clock in the morning, order a pizza, eating a pizza, sleeping throughout the day, right through the day. Uh, actually, the, the event was six o'clock in the evening. I competed there, won the competition. I had to jump in a car, drive back to the airport, jump on the plane. Flew back to, to, to Joburg, flew to Stellenbosch. Uh, while I'm in the car, uh, I'm very, very tired. Uh, went to the hotel, quickly jump in the pool just to wake up, jump out, drove off to Stellenbosch, putting on my clothes while I'm driving because the time was running out. The guys was actually uh, walking onto the, the field when I drove there, jump, uh, jump into the lineup, went uh, um, onto the track. Through, I think I threw one throw into the into the pavilion. At one side, they 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 um, uh, 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 
beacon it off, so you can't, couldn't yeah. sit there. I remember breaking a sleeper. In that days, there were sleepers on the back, back straight. And uh, managed to throw a 72 there still and win it. Um, yes, but I, then I thought I'm going to sleep. But I was so tired afterwards, I couldn't even sleep. But that was a very interesting week. I think that was the closest it came not not uh, keeping the streak, you know. It was like in seconds and minutes. And But I I managed, I, I uh, achieved my goal. I, I, I won the Grand Prix in Melbourne and I won the South African Championship in a week. Competing in, in, in uh, how can I say, literally two days apart. That was amazing. Oh, I'm sure the other South African competitors uh, were hoping that you weren't going to make it back so they could actually have a chance. <laughs> um, Chris, you, you, just about, yes, it's an amazing to have a world record and yes, it's amazing to have an Olympic title. But you've done something that no other sportsman has ever done before and more than likely will never, ever do again. It's highly unlikely that any sportsman will ever win a national title in any sport 23 years in a row. I think you are downplaying the fact that you are South African example of Superman, without a doubt. Yeah, well, thank you for the compliment. Um, uh, it's nice knowing it. I, I like actually I like the number 23 as well. I think maybe I stopped on 23 because I like the number. But uh, um, uh, like I said, it's it's nice. It's it's nice being recognised for that. And I, I will tell you, it was a lot of work doing that, maintaining your body. I, I I think that 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 I can see that. I I and I can appreciate it. And I think maybe Sunette will, will give me a go. I think she's on 14 or 15 now. Maybe Sunette will you know, will be standing next to the track. She asked, what number are you now? I said, no, nah, I'm on 20. She, says, uh, she told me, no, I'm in, I can't remember what was her total. Like, I'm on 11. Yes, know that, you know. So <laughs> maybe Sunette is going to give me a go. I don't know. Maybe the javelin will, throw, will fly a, a few extra years. But... Um, but I could remember the, the, the difficulty for me was when you, when you come to 20, because you remember a competition is a very, it's a very uncertain thing. You can feel good today and, and you can still not win the competition. You can feel bad today and you can, and you can still perform. And, and, and coping with all that variables is very difficult. I remember the day, I, the last time I lost, I felt so great in the building up to the, the week before that I felt so confident that everything's going to go go my way, you know? So... And the number 20 was a bad one because I, I, I had, my knees were in bad shape that day as well. And there were so many guys in better shape than me, but I managed with, with some, some um, maybe experience. I hate to say experience because everybody always tells me you beat us because you had experience, but I, I like to think it's a little bit more than that. Uh, but um, I managed to push that through. And then uh, and, and 21, that was the equaling record one that was a lot of pressure on me because i didn't have that freedom you know i knew you, you, you were doing well for 20 years now now it's the 21st year you can equal this world record uh, don't 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 uh, um, uh, um, throw it away you must focus and then you overcook everything you do everything bad and i and i and i managed to to win it on my my last pro then i felt a little bit at ease because i felt okay at least i i, I share this world record and the 22nd one um, was much better. It was, it, I wouldn't say it was much better because I still had a lot of pain, but that pressure wasn't there. And I managed to beat that. And I thought maybe that was a little bit criminal. I actually stole this one. Uh, I think there were two guys I, I would name that could have beaten me. And, and, I was, and I was so happy about that. So, so getting through that extra two, now I know the next guy that comes around must do 23. And then they must be twin. That's difficult. Uh, just to get to the twenty first one, I remember there was one guy, uh, I think it's a 2008 Olympic streak because he ended up a twin. I thought it was between him and me go uh, three further, but um, um, there was actually a big article about this in, in the IAAF. But uh, um, like I said, the nature of competition is so unpredictable, uh, and to manage to, to sort everything out every time was 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 a big blessing. I, I still feel today God blessed me a lot with this. Um, there's a lot of times that I throw out and I'm on a pressure, and but like a, you, yeah, I agree with you, it's a little bit unusual to do 23 in a row. In a row. No, that's completely never heard of. And the fact is that you you won your 
last one at the age of 44. So you obviously had the experience and you had kept in shape. I'm sure most of the other competitors were calling you grandpa sort of behind your back. Um, Chris, of all these gold medals and all these titles, has there been one moment that's been the pinnacle? I think where the, the big thing is, I'm, I'm still up to date in the Southern Hemisphere, the only guy that uh, thrown 80 meters. There's guy that, guys that came up to 79. In 2002, when I threw in Pretoria and, and, and threw 80.19, that was an amazing moment. I, if I look at the videos after, I was smiling. I couldn't stop smiling for the, for the whole week. Uh, uh, that was a big goal for me. And I always thought, I wondered, can you throw 80 meters clean? Can you throw 80 meters without any performance enhancing drugs? And I, maybe I I, 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 I I will say that there's a lot of guys that manage to throw 80 meters without using performance enhancing drugs. But there's a lot of guys that use stuff that was not legal. So so it was a nice feeling knowing I did it clean, I did it the right way, and 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 uh, that that was an amazing feeling. And I managed to beat the, the World Cup champion, the guy that beat me in 90, 1998, Tibor Gesek. I managed to beat him. I managed to beat uh, the 1996 um, uh, uh, Olympic champion Balaskis in that in that meeting as well. So so it was nice beating a World Cup champion and Olympic champion in a meeting and get the 80 meters. That was a that that was a that was a big big moment for me. Um, and every every obviously um, uh, uh, it was nice getting all those African titles and the African game titles, but. If you look at what was what was against me in 2010 at the Commonwealth Games, the the physical state that I was in, and managed to 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 to, to push that one through, uh, that was nice. The, just the fight in that one, you know, the managing. I was crippled for a for a week after that. I couldn't walk, you know. So, just getting everything together that I had at my disposal and, and utilizing it to, to get the medal on my last throw was an amazing amazing feeling. Um, that that was good. Um, but the 80 definitely the first 80 was 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 amazing that, that felt great Chris, it's been an absolute honor chatting to you tonight on sport sa daily diary uh, we could chat all night uh, about you and, and your career um you, you really have done a phenomenal job and and an absolute south african sporting icon without a doubt um thank you for your time thank you for your stories uh, and uh, good luck and you never know, maybe we'll see you out uh, throwing, uh, throwing it some more or coaching someone to the top of their game. Thank you very much. It was nice chatting to you and, and all of the best to you. Thank you. Cheers. Don't miss tomorrow's episode of Sport SA Daily Diary, where we will be catching up with one of South Africa's leading one-metre and three-metre board divers.